the first piece is an industry that changes as quickly as ours, where a scientific insight can bring about a dramatic change. My goal and my lab's goal is to keep the company science proof. That's the guarantee we give our CEO. The second is to go a level down and say, okay, what does science mean in this, in this industry? Right? It's not strictly a technology industry, even though the bulk of our scientists are computer technologists. There's a healthy element of social sciences. I mentioned the contributions of economists who bring insights from airline yield management to advertising. In similar fashion, we have psychologists and sociologists who are bringing insights about consumers to bear. So examples of these include how people behave when they're looking at content together is different from how they look at it separately. The same video, if you and I watch it different times, we react differently than we watch together and we play with the controls together. So taking that level of sociological insight and translating it into a working product, I think is a very exciting ongoing challenge. So these are two of the big challenges in our field. The, the third thing I'll bring about, uh, I'll mention, which is a lasting, enduring challenge for us, is a puzzle of what makes users engaged. Okay, why do people hang out doing what they do in Facebook versus what they do in Yahoo versus what they do in Google? These are all different spheres of activity. Okay. And, and here's a specific thought I'll leave you with as I think about the future. Right? Almost everything on the web today is a translation of an offline experience to the online world. We used to read newspapers and magazines. Now we read news online. We used to shop. Now we shop online. We used to talk to friends. Now we go to Facebook and communicate with friends. Okay. But surely, when you have a powerful new medium the, like the web, with all its technology, all that data mining and targeting and measurement, surely that cannot be all there is to it. So what is it we can use this medium to do online that we could have never hoped to do offline? And there's some evidence that there are, in fact, things. So I'll give you an example. If you take Twitter, I will argue to you there is no an analog of Twitter in the offline world. Okay. So that is evidence that people can do things online that they never dreamed of doing offline. And I will further argue that the bulk of the growth that is ahead of us in terms of what people will end up doing is of this genre of things that never existed offline. So it's these synthetic new experiences online. And so, as a technologist and scientist, the exciting challenge to me is figuring out what are these new opportunities that didn't exist before. So, the bulk of the talent that I've been fortunate to get comes from the very best universities around the world. And we offer them a couple of things uh, that, in varying measures, some of our competitors do, but not all. So, first, it's access to internet scale data, computing, and problems. And by problems, I mean the ability to try and dissect the behavior of hundreds of millions of users. That is not something you could easily get in academia. Right? In fact, all of these are, are new. At the same time, we do give our scientists something that academia gives, which is the basic science they do. We encourage them to publish it in the open community. So the conference that's going on right now in Kowloon is an instance of a peer-reviewed conference that is populated by academics. But you'll find a lot of our scientists presenting their work there. So this combination of working on web scale problems, web scale computing, web scale data, together with academic openness, is a very powerful combination that draws to us many of the best people in our field.